Hi, what you're about to see are excerpts taken from session two of Ajahn Surat. He is an incredible trainer. He has been a trainer in Thailand for like 50 years and he has an unbelievable protective style that you will definitely see in these clips. I highly recommend you check out the full hour session in the Muay Thai library. Click on the link in the description below and you can see that as a patron. Uh, but definitely enjoy this, take something from it. I'm working on this right now and you can never go wrong with Ajahn Surat. He's amazing. Get behind your shoulder, no, under no. your shoulders, yeah. under your shoulders. This is where you protect all the yeah. time. Like this is kind yeah. of the like, the this is the diamond and everything else is a little bit more expensive. <laughs> So he saw my foot coming out on my knee. Hmm. He doesn't like this. He wants the foot directly under the knee for power. No, not me. He's saying all the power is coming straight through the knee because the foot is aligned underneath. If the foot is out, he's saying that the power is a little bit off. Don't don't. You see, only when you don't don't means straight. But you see. No. So he's saying you hit oh, only where your with foot the is. knee. You don't want your foot inside or outside. Straight. Yeah. This is what in Thai is called siap. Siap means to skewer or to stab. He's saying, okay, you can have technique. You can have different techniques of knees. So you can do these chicken wing knees. You can do jumping knees. You can swing. You can have your foot to the outside. But. When it's time to knock someone out, you want the siap knee, and the siap knee, you want your foot directly below your knee. He's not saying never put your foot outside. He's saying for power, for the kill shot, you want your foot directly underneath your knee. Is he saying go straight? Yeah. Oh boy. He's saying there's no power yeah. when it comes wide. Yeah, no power. He said for technique, this is okay, but you're going to throw like five. Yeah. Right? So when you're like... So yeah. this is kind of something that Hippie mm. Sigmini talked to me about, about practicing your kill shot. If you can use different techniques, like you can do your jumping knees, you can do your jabs and hooks and things like this, but you always want to have your kill shot in your set of what you're doing. You can go back into other strikes afterwards as though the knockout didn't happen, but you want to have that one kill shot kind of like in your head or like setting up for it over and over and over again. It's actually a beautiful and a little bit different. Again, that he has his fighters do 30 seconds of just kicking on one side. So instead of counting the kicks, 30 seconds, he has the stats on the back and he actually swings his opposite side. I don't know if Ajahn Sarat loves that, you don't want to be opening up your jaw on the other side, but you need some movement to create the swing, so find your compromise, find the way that you can do that, but on that side, he's completely behind his Try, baby. shoulder Try, baby. all the time. So speed is what he wants for 30 seconds. See how I can keep my hand up a little bit, it's like coming off and on, but it's not coming down. Uh, Tall fighters can do them too. If you watch the Holy Grail fight of Diesel Noy versus Samark, Diesel Noy's not short. He's got some nasty long leg kicks. But as a short fighter, if you're fighting a taller opponent, leg kicks are your friend. You are cutting off their movement and their power. So again, the importance on this technique is protecting yourself and bringing your arm across. So if you're going to be coming in close to kick someone's leg, they're probably coming forward with their weight punching and things like this already. So you need to really protect yourself to be chopping at someone's legs because they can nail you in the face while you're doing it. But if you protect yourself at the same time, Berkler uh, in the Muay Thai library teaches this, how to come across and really tuck your head. Um, Ramba also has amazing leg kicks, very important to like protect yourself at the same time. Just, and the range that we're at, the only options I have are to punch him, to locate him, or maybe to get a knee down the center, but he's controlling with his guard. 
He likes that. Three, Hitting right on the eye to the See how long it takes to hit someone four times in the leg? Like three seconds, two seconds. Just the fuck. I almost got knocked out by leg kicks once early in my career. I can attest. <laughs> leg kicks suck. If you're facing a kicker, kick the hell out of their legs. You won't have a kicker anymore. So on this side, my my right guard comes down a little bit. So that's why he wants no movement on the upper body. Is that left or right side? You're still protecting the entire side time. Boy. And he's doing leg, leg, leg. Yeah, and then it's a head very kick. good technique. Low, low, low. low. Oh. Oh, you get people like but a uh, very your short range. Your consciousness starts dropping, the and the pain in your legs. You're like, oh, I have to protect my legs. And like, Bosh. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I thought I thought that was a high kick. That was not a high kick. Like, like hit the head. Hey, 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 hey. Up on the white. white. Up, up, up. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Shh. Oh. Shh. Oh. Shh. 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 You want to kick high, you every day. So he's saying if you want to kick high, every day you have to stretch. Like you have to get this flexibility to be able to come up easily. Two things. Stretch. Yes. Yes. On the rope. I need to stretch. Two, you do not have to be able to like put your leg on someone's head in a comfortable stretch in order to kick the head. There's static stretching, which I can like barely touch my toes, and then there's dynamic, where like the kick comes up. I can kick someone in the head that's taller than me by like flipping it up. I cannot put my leg up in the air like this. So, yes, the flexibility is good, especially with this. He's catching my leg, and then he's trying to flip me, and if I jump with it, I'm not going to go, but because I'm very inflexible, Yes. If I don't jump, I'm definitely going. People who are more flexible, you can lift the leg and they're like, oh, I'm bendy, I keep going. So, two things. Yes, yes, work on your flexibility. Second, if you're not flexible, don't despair. You can still kick people in the head. I just kick someone in the head, I'm not flexible at all. He's showing me how when you start tagging someone, they get lower and lower and lower anyway. So your kick doesn't really have to be that high after all, because you've already like brought them down with your kicks to the leg. And you'll do it, and then he will spoil it for you a bunch of times to make you believe in it. Not to be a dick, not to be like, oh, ha, 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 that doesn't actually work. It's to make you be like, yeah, it's not going to work 100% of the time, but I'm going to throw it with my all anyway. It's a very cool way to train people. It's how he trains People who already have heart, it's how he trains their heart. It's really beautiful. No, I don't cannot, don't cannot. So he's showing me how putting that hand across his face makes it so that he can't get around it. He's touching me. It's making me believe in it. He's thrown me onto the ring from this position many times to like make me kick regardless of being thrown. It's not like if you do this, you won't get thrown. It's you can always be thrown. So throw your all into it and believe if I get thrown, I'm okay. He's trying to correct this thing that I wasn't quite getting before, which is you can latch onto the neck as you're coming off of your kick and kind of pull them around. See how I wasn't getting close enough? Spinning out. I don't actually get this at any around. point he while he's showing down. me. I'm, I really struggle with it. Like you're dunking, but ducking the head. Karahat taught me a turn in the clinch, down. which instead of pulling the neck, you push the neck. And you kind of push the person's head directly into the spot that you're vacating with your foot stepping out. Ajahn just did exactly that. It's exactly the same as Karahat's push turn in the clinch, but I'm really struggling with it here because I'm. Down. Hitting Come too on, much, see down. how tangling up my feet. Come on, baby. Just gotta push the head straight down. <sighs> but watch me not get it. Down. And see all the ways not to do it. Down. <laughs> so see how he's bringing together how he was catching the punches and then throwing the leg kicks. 
when he catches my fist, he wants me to kick. So basically, if your opponent carries or puts their arm out or is like matching your guard, you kick under it. <laughs> I love it. You need this baby so much. You <laughs> long time. Yeah. yeah. And my D. Right he said for right a long hand. time you've been throwing your arm, so it's right hard for you to right hand, right feel it, to remember. Oh. It's okay, people have habits, you just yeah. overwrite them. So he's hitting me lightly. When he hits his fighters, he hits them hard. Hey, so that's Ajahn Surat, part two. If you enjoyed that clip, check out the full hour session in the Muay Thai library. And we also have a previous entry, so there's another hour for you to go to check out and look at. Um, and while you're there, as a patron, click on the link in the description below to become one. There's more than a hundred hours of long-form training instruction in the Muay Thai library. So tons to check out, lots of different styles, lots to learn from and experiment with and keep what you like. So <laughs> hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you.